When studying the motion of an object, it's important to be able to identify its position and how that position is changing. And we can quantify that with the concept of distance or displacement. However, those changes in positions can happen over different time periods. And when we have time in play, we start to deal with rates of motion. And we have the concepts of speed and velocity. So let's start with speed. Speed, we use the letter S for speed, is a scalar quantity. Remember, a scalar quantity does not have direction. Right? When you get a speeding ticket, the cop doesn't care whether you're going east or west. They just care how fast you're going. Right? So scalar meaning has magnitude only. Speed does not have direction. Or rather, we don't care the direction. When we want to define speed, speed is equal to the distance traveled over the time it takes to travel it. All right? Remember, d would be our distance. And t would be the time it takes to travel that distance. And when we look at units, well, the units for distance, the standard unit would be meters. And the standard for time would be seconds, which means speed would have to be measured in meters over seconds. So let's write out some of the units we're going to be dealing with. That would be the standard uh, metric units. We're going to deal with meters over seconds. Uh, but anything that is a distance unit over a time unit would also work for speed. Right? So you'll typically see uh, miles per hour, also known as MPH. Uh, that's what your cars in the U.S. are going to uh, measure. Uh, another imperial unit you might see is feet per second, or uh, FPS, which can also be frames per second, uh, so that can be confusing. Uh, back in metric, you might see kilometers per hour. Um, these are all different units for speed. Uh, but basically, if you have a distance over time, you know you have a speed, and the units will tell you what you have. And we can take that basic equation, speed, is equal to distance over time. And we can do a little bit of algebra and you can see different versions of the same equation, uh, which would suggest that distance is equal to speed times time. Or you can say that time is equal to distance over speed. So just three versions of the same equation uh, to deal with speed. Now, the vector version and the one we're gonna be using mostly in this class is velocity. Velocity, we use the letter V. And velocity is a vector quantity. It is magnitude and direction. So if you have a velocity, you have to indicate the direction of that velocity, of the speed. So if I'm driving 50 miles per hour east, I've now defined a velocity. Uh, so as such, if we're talking about direction and a vector quantity, well, it wouldn't be distance, but it would be displacement. So velocity, our equation for velocity is now displacement over time, right? Remember, delta x is displacement, and displacement is also a vector quantity, which is what makes velocity a vector quantity. T would be our time. Remember, the units for displacement are the same as distance. Meters is the standard, and seconds is the standard for time, which would make the units for velocity also meters per second. So again, speed and velocity in, are really the same quantity, but now we have to deal with the direction with velocity. Uh, once again, because they're the same type of quantity, They'll also share the units. You have meters per second is the standard. You might have miles per hour. You might have kilometers per hour. You might have feet per second. These are all units, a distance unit or a displacement unit over a time. And if you take your equation, velocity is displacement over time. You get different variations of that same one. You have displacement is velocity times time. And you also could find that time is equal to displacement over velocity. So you have these different variations of the same equation uh, in order to find uh, our velocity. Now, we're also gonna work with a version 
of this equation where we break out our delta x variable. So since delta x is really x final minus x initial, well then we can take our equation and say that we have x final minus x initial is equal to velocity times time and we get another equation by adding x initial to both sides we can get an equation that looks like this x final is v times t plus x initial and in our class we're going to be using this equation a lot uh, to deal with motion and we're going to look at how graphically this starts to show up you might even notice um, maybe slope intercept form from math class uh, but again we'll get into this a little bit uh, more in a later uh, video. Uh, I also want to introduce an uh, equation that we've seen in positive physics. Uh, so when we're talking about velocity, uh, velocity can change and so if it's changing and in this case uh, in some problems changing steadily we could find an average velocity. So if I want to define average velocity I would write it as VAVG, or as they do in positive physics, they put V with a line over it. And average velocity is really simple to calculate. V average, or V with a line, is just the initial velocity plus some later velocity over two. Right? It's the average of two velocities. Right? So pretty basic, um, but when you start Factoring in the direction, you start to see some funny things happen with velocity. So let's look at a basic example of how we might use something like this. Uh, let's look at a car. And it's traveling down here, and it starts at rest at zero meters per second. And at the end, it's traveling 20 meters per second. And let's say it makes this trip in five seconds. Well, this is where we can use the average velocity equation to help us solve this problem. Because what I want, maybe want to know is, well, what is the displacement? Well, I don't have my velocity because it's changing, but I can find my average velocity, the average, or that V with the line, is going to be my initial velocity, 0 meters per second, plus my final velocity, 20 meters per second, over 2. So my average velocity is 10 meters per second, and I can find that my displacement is equal to that average velocity times that time period. So it's going to be 10 meters per second times the five seconds. Look what happens to my units, by the way. Seconds cancels, I get units of meters, which is what I would expect for a displacement. And it would suggest that this car was displaced 50 meters. All right, so again, you can kind of see how we use average velocity uh, to solve this problem here. Now, what gets tricky though is when you have a changing direction. All right, so let's look at another example, final example here, uh, where we have maybe an out and back. So let's say this object is going out to some position. Let's call it, let's say it goes six meters. Let's say it takes two seconds to get there. All right, well, what is the velocity? Um, let's, let's assume it's, it's moving at a, a fairly steady rate. Well, the speed out, or the velocity out, would be the six meters, let's define direction, let's say to the right is positive, so positive six over two seconds, that would be positive three meters per second out. But then let's loop it back, and let's say they came all the way back to the end. So now we have our initial position as also the final position. All right, well, the velocity in Ooh, careful. This is a leftward displacement. It would be left six meters in the same two seconds, which means we have a negative three meters per second velocity. Again, careful with these signs. 
So what does that mean about our total velocity or our average velocity? Well, the average would be the velocity out plus the velocity in all over two. And what do we get? We get three meters per second plus a negative three meters per second all over two, huh, zero meters per second. That's kind of a strange concept, right? We did this big trip. We actually went a total speed. The average speed would be six meters plus another six meters all over four seconds, right? The average speed would still be the three meters per second, but my average velocity, right? Again, here I did total distance over total time, right? It was six out in two seconds and six back in two seconds. Uh, so my average speed was three meters per second, but my average velocity is zero meters per second. And that's kind of a weird concept when you deal with velocity. And what's really happened here is you had a velocity out of three meters per second to the right and a velocity in of three meters per second to the left. And those two vector arrows actually canceled themselves out to get a velocity of zero meters per second total, right? And again, if you understand our equation for velocity, velocity is simply the displacement over time. Well, what was my position, my change in position? Well, my displacement was zero meters for the full trip, right? I started and finished at the same spot and I did that in four seconds and therefore I have zero meters per second, right? So when we look at average velocity, uh, that is one area where it can be confusing when we're changing direction. Uh, anytime you return back to your starting point, you actually have an average velocity of zero meters per second, uh, even though clearly that object was moving. Uh, so just looked at a couple examples here, how we're going to apply velocity. Uh, here's where you might typically use that average velocity equation. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce another way to, to find uh, the displacement for a problem like this. Uh, but just understand that velocity, we're dealing with a vector quantity where the direction is very important.